Social TV Story Time. Once upon a time, there lived a very wealthy man. He had a sweet and kind-hearted daughter. Since the man's wife had died, he married again, hoping his new wife would be a good mother to his daughter. But the man's new wife turned out to be a mean and selfish woman. And she had two daughters who were just like her. They were all so rude and mean that the man grew very unhappy. And went to work far away. And so the man left, leaving his daughter with her stepmother and stepsisters. The poor girl was loving and kind to her stepmother and stepsisters, but they were very mean to her and turned her into a servant. They even changed her name to Cinderella, since her face grew dusty from the cinders that she would clean in the fireplace. <laughs> Your face is always full of cinders. <laughs> we will call you Cinderella. Cinderella. <laughs> One day, a royal messenger came to the house. The king and queen have invited all the young ladies who live here to a ball tomorrow evening. Their son, the prince, will dance with all the young ladies and choose a bride. The invitation made everyone very happy. I can't wait to dance with the prince. I hope he chooses me as his bride. I will make sure that my daughters are the best dressed amongst all the young ladies at the ball. On the day of the ball, Cinderella's stepmother bought the best clothes and shoes for her two daughters. But she didn't get anything for Cinderella. Mother, I'd like something new to wear to the ball too. I don't have anything other than these clothes. Cinderella, these clothes are just right for you because you're a servant girl. And as you know, servant girls shouldn't dance with princes or come to balls. <laughs> Poor Cinderella, she sat at home and cried while everyone else went to the ball. Suddenly, a kind and beautiful fairy appeared. Hello, Cinderella. Hello? Who are you? I'm your fairy godmother. Would you like to go to the ball? Huh? I'd like to, but I can't. I don't have nice clothes to wear or a carriage to travel in, you see. You will have everything you need to go to the ball as soon as I wave my wand. And Cinderella's old clothes turned into a shimmering evening gown. Her slippers turned into delicate glass slippers. Huh? Wow! The fairy godmother then took Cinderella to the garden. She waved her wand again and turned a pumpkin into a shiny golden carriage. 
the fairy godmother also turned the mice playing in the garden into horses, a rat into a coachman, and a lizard into a smart footman. I can go to the ball now. Thank you, fairy godmother. Enjoy yourself, Cinderella. But be sure to return by midnight, as my magic will disappear after that. And the beautiful dress that you are wearing, the coachman, the footman, and the horses will all turn back into what they were before. I will be back by midnight, Fairy Godmother. Goodbye! So, Cinderella left for the ball. Cinderella looked so beautiful that everyone turned to look at her the moment she entered the palace. And the prince was so charmed by her that he only wanted to dance with her. May I please dance with you? Huh? Yes! No one recognized Cinderella and she felt very happy dancing with the prince. The prince felt that she was the kindest, most beautiful young woman he had ever met. Who is that girl? The prince only wants to dance with her. I have never seen her before. She must be a princess or someone very wealthy. Time flew by as Cinderella danced with the prince. And in no time, it grew close to midnight. I'm sorry, Prince, but it's time for me to leave now. Wait! Please tell me your name and where you live, so we can meet again. Cinderella reached her house just as the clock struck midnight. And right after that, the magic disappeared. Only the glass slipper on Cinderella's foot remained unchanged. The very next day, the royal messenger came to the house with the prince. Oh, it's the prince. He must be wanting to marry me. No, me. The messenger was carrying the glass slipper that had fallen off Cinderella's foot. We are looking for the owner of this slipper. The prince will marry whoever this slipper fits. The slipper's mine. Ah, oh, it's too big for my foot. Ugh, it's too small for my foot. The prince noticed Cinderella standing in the corner. And though she looked very different, from the way she looked at the ball, he walked right up to her. Please, would you try this slipper on? You are the one who I danced with last night. You are my princess. 
Yes, she is. Huh? Cinderella and the prince had a grand wedding. They invited everyone to the celebrations and left no one out. Cinderella even invited her stepsisters and stepmother, who decided to be as kind and loving as Cinderella. Cinderella and the prince then lived happily ever after. Ago, there lived a beautiful queen whose greatest wish was to have a daughter. I wish I had a child of my own, a beautiful daughter with skin as white as snow, with lips as red as a rose, and hair as black as coal. It wasn't long before the queen's wish came true. She gave birth to a beautiful little girl, whom she named Snow White. But sadly, the queen became very sick and died when Snow White was very little. Snow White's father, the king, eventually remarried. His new wife, the new queen. Came to live with him and Snow White in the castle. The new queen was very beautiful, but she was a proud and cruel woman. In her room, she had a magical talking mirror, and every morning, she would stand before it and ask the same question. Magical mirror on the wall, tell me who is the fairest of them all. The magical mirror would always speak the truth and tell the queen that she was the fairest. You, my queen, you are the fairest of them all. <laughs> the queen was always pleased with the magical mirror's answer. Because she knew that the mirror could never tell a lie. The years passed, and Snow White grew to be a beautiful young woman. Everyone admired Snow White's beauty. Her skin was as white as snow. Her lips as red as a rose, and her hair as black as coal, just as her mother had wished for. One morning, the wicked queen approached the mirror and asked again, "Magical mirror on the wall, tell me, who is the fairest of all?" To the wicked queen's great shock, the magical mirror. Had a different answer for her that day. Snow White, Snow White, Snow White is the fairest of all. Huh? Ugh. The wicked queen knew that the magical mirror only spoke the truth, and she grew very envious of Snow White. So one day, when the king was away, the wicked queen called a hunter to her chambers. You will take Snow White to the forest and get rid of her, and bring back a lock of her hair for me. The hunter took Snow White to the forest, where they came to a cliff. He prepared to push Snow White off the cliff, but when he saw how loving she was, he stopped himself. 
Princess Snow White, your stepmother, the Wicked Queen, has asked me to get rid of you. But I do not have the heart to hurt you. Please stay here in the forest and never return to the kingdom. The hunter then left Snow White in the forest, but he made sure to cut a lock of her hair first. The hunter returned to the castle and presented the lock of hair to the wicked queen. Ha ha ha! Snow White is gone! And I am the fairest of them all once again. Wandering through the forest, Snow White came upon a tiny cottage near some mountains. She entered the cottage and found a delicious meal laid out on the table. Seven little plates? Mmm, they are full of delicious food. Snow White was so hungry that she ate all the food. She then went to rest in the bedroom. Oh, there are seven little beds here. There must be seven children living in this house. Ah, I think I'll take a nap until they come back. Quite exhausted, Snow White fell fast asleep. The house belonged to seven dwarves. They were miners who worked in the mountains. And when they returned in the evening, they realized that someone was in their house. Huh? Someone's eaten our food. Huh? Someone's sleeping on our beds. Snow White heard the dwarves and woke up. She told them who she was and what had happened. My stepmother will kill me if I go back to the castle. The seven dwarves were very kind to Snow White and offered to let her stay in the house. You can stay with us. But you must be careful while we are away. And not let anyone enter the house. For it could be your stepmother trying to harm you again. Snow White enjoyed living with the dwarves. They were very kind to her. And she felt quite safe and happy with them. Since the hunter had given the Wicked Queen the lock of hair, she believed that Snow White was dead. So she was very surprised when she went to the magical mirror again. Magical mirror on the wall. Tell me, who is the fairest of all? Snow White. Snow White is the fairest of all. Huh? But Snow White is dead. The Wicked Queen couldn't believe her eyes when the magical mirror showed her that Snow White was still alive. Ugh. The Wicked Queen was so angry that she decided to get rid of Snow White herself. The Wicked Queen first disguised herself as an old beggar. She then took a poisoned apple and went to the dwarf's house. Snow White was all alone when the Wicked Queen came to the house. Hello? Is anyone home? I'm a poor old woman and I'm feeling very cold. Can I come in for a little while? Oh! You poor thing, please come in. Snow White fell for the Wicked Queen's trick and led her into the house. You are very kind. Please accept this apple as a token of my thanks, my love. 
Thank you. Please, take a bite of the apple loaf and tell me how you like it. Snow White did not recognize the Wicked Queen. And so, she innocently took a big bite of the apple. Ah, uh, uh, my head! The poison in the apple put Snow White into a deep, deep sleep. <laughs> now I am again the fairest of them all. When the dwarves returned, they saw Snow White lying cold and still. Oh no, something has happened to Snow White. Look, there's an apple here. Oh no, the Wicked Queen must have been here. The apple looks like it has been poisoned. I hope it doesn't kill her. The poor dwarves couldn't stop crying. They carried Snow White to the top of the mountain and waited by her side. Sometime later, a kind and handsome prince came by. He saw Snow White and was taken aback by her beauty. What a beautiful young lady. But why is she looking so pale and cold? The warmth from the prince's heart woke Snow White up. Uh, uh. The prince and the seven dwarves were very happy to see Snow White wake up. They took very good care of her and nursed her back to health. To everyone's great happiness, the prince then asked Snow White to marry him. Princess Snow White, Will you be my wife? Yes! Hooray! When the Wicked Queen heard that Snow White was still alive, she plotted to harm her again. But the prince and the seven dwarves were ready. Before she could act, they replaced the Wicked Queen's shoes with a magical pair that never stopped walking. Huh? Why can't I stop walking? Where am I going? Snow White and the Prince then lived happily ever after. Long ago, there lived a little brother and sister whose names were Hansel and Gretel. They lived with their father and stepmother in a tiny cottage at the edge of a forest. Hansel and Gretel's father was a woodcutter. He used to chop trees in the forest. He didn't earn very much money from his work so the family had very little to eat. Hansel and Gretel's stepmother did not like the children. She thought they ate too much and that caring for them was too much work. One night, she complained to Hansel and Gretel's father. I am fed up with your children. You need to leave them in the woods. I can't do that. They are my children. Of course you can. I'll show you how. Tomorrow at dawn, we'll take them into the forest and leave them there. Hansel was still awake. And he heard everything his stepmother had said. Later that night, Hansel snuck out of the house and picked up some shiny white pebbles that were sparkling in the dark. At dawn the next day,
Hansel and Gretel's stepmother called out to them. Your father and I are going to the forest to chop wood. You children are coming with us. Here's a loaf of bread in case you get hungry. As they walked into the forest, Hansel secretly dropped the pebbles he had to mark the path. When they arrived deep in the heart of the forest, the children's father and stepmother split off to chop some wood. We are going to chop wood. You two must wait here until we return. Yes, mother. The kids spent the whole day alone in the forest. As night approached, Hansel and Gretel's father and stepmother had not returned. Hansel, I'm starting to get really scared. When are mother and father going to come back to take us home? I don't think they're coming back, Gretel. But you don't have to worry. I'll get us home. The pebbles Hansel had dropped on the ground were sparkling in the dark and the kids were able to follow them all the way back to their house. Their father was delighted to see them. Hansel and Gretel, thank goodness you are safe. I am sorry. I'll never leave you alone again. <laughs> A few days later, Hansel and Gretel's father went to the town to repair his axe. And Hansel and Gretel were left alone in the house with their stepmother. Hmm. Now that their father is far away, this is the perfect time for me to get rid of those brats. The evil stepmother ordered the children out of the house. Come on, you. We're going to have a picnic in the forest. A picnic? Now? Hansel didn't trust his stepmother. He secretly snatched a loaf of bread and hid it away. As they walked into the forest, Hansel dropped breadcrumbs on the ground behind him. Once they were deep inside the forest, their stepmother looked at them harshly and said, You two wait here. I'll come back in a little while. The children waited, but their stepmother didn't come back. It grew dark, and Gretel again started to feel very afraid. Hansel, let's go home. I'm scared. We need to wait until morning, Gretel. I left a trail of breadcrumbs, but... We won't be able to see them until morning when it's brighter. When the sun rose, Hansel and Gretel went looking for the breadcrumbs, but they couldn't find them anywhere. Oh no! 
The birds and the mice must have eaten the breadcrumbs. Uh, how will we go home now? Hansel and Gretel walked and walked through the forest, hoping to find someone who could help them. After some time, Hansel and Gretel came across a marvelous house. It was made of gingerbread and decorated with chocolates, gumdrops, and a bunch of other sweets. Look at that house, Hansel. It's made of our favorite sweets. Mmm, it looks so yummy. The two children were so hungry that they broke off big pieces of the house and started eating them. An old woman came out of the house. She smiled when she saw Hansel and Gretel. You poor children. You must be very hungry. Come in. I'll give you some hot milk to drink. Hansel and Gretel went into the old woman's house, where she fed them very nicely. Drink as much as you like, children. Don't be shy. There's plenty. Hee <laughs> hee. When Hansel and Gretel had finished, they told the old woman that they wanted to go home. <clears throat> Thank you for feeding us. Can you tell us how we can go home now? The old woman <laughs> laughed. Home? Never! You two are staying here so that I can eat you up. <laughs> huh? Poor Hansel and Gretel. The old woman had trapped them. By the time the children realized that the old woman was a child-eating witch who had built a house of sweets to trap them, it was too late. The old witch locked Hansel up in a cage. You stay here, boy. Until you are plump enough for me to eat. <laughs> the witch then turned to Gretel. <laughs> you, my dear, work for me now. She made Gretel cook and clean and wash and scrub. In the mornings, the old witch would check to see if Hansel was plump enough to eat. Show me your finger, Hansel. Let's see how plump you are. Knowing the old witch didn't see well, Hansel would trick her by holding out a chicken bone. Ah! You are still too skinny. One morning, the witch was feeling very hungry. Angrily, she called out to Gretel. Gretel, today I am going to eat Hansel for breakfast. Fill up the big pot with boiling water. I will make a nice Hansel soup. Huh? Poor Gretel. She didn't know what to do. <laughs> she knew she had to save Hansel and so thought of a plan as she was putting the pot of water to boil. After some time, the old witch came to see if the water in the pot was boiling. Is the water boiling yet? I'm ready to eat. Um, I'm not sure. I can't see inside the pot. It's too high for me. 
The witch was so eager to eat Hansel that she climbed up on the stove and peeped inside the pot. Clever little Gretel then pushed the old witch into the pot with all her might. The old witch fell into the boiling water and Gretel closed the lid. She then unlocked the cage and let Hansel out. The old witch is gone, Hansel. We can go home now. Hooray! Not only was the witch gone, but Hansel and Gretel found a pot full of gold coins in the witch's house. We'll be able to buy plenty of food with this. After walking for a very long time, Hansel and Gretel finally found their way out of the forest. When they reached home, their father was waiting for them. Children, I'm so happy to see you. Thank goodness you've come back. I've kicked your stepmother out of the house. She will never bother us again. Hansel and Gretel showed their father the gold coins they had found. He was delighted. The three of them were never short of money again, and they all lived happily ever after. Long, long ago, there lived a little girl. Her name was Rosie. But everyone called her Little Red Riding Hood. And that was because she wore her favorite red riding cloak every day. Hello! Little Red Riding Hood lived with her parents <laughs> in a small house near the woods. Here, Bunny! Here, here! At the other end of the woods, lived Little Red Riding Hood's grandmother. She lived alone in a small cottage. One morning, Little Red Riding Hood decided she wanted to visit her grandmother. So, she asked her mother for permission. Mother, may I go to meet Grandma? She hasn't been well. I want to cheer her up. Yes, you may, Little Riding Hood. I'll give you some goodies for Grandma, too. But you must be careful on the way. And you must not wander in the woods or talk to strangers. Don't worry, Mother. I'll be careful. Little Red Riding Hood's mother put some goodies in a basket and gave the basket to Little Riding Hood. This basket is for your grandma. It's full of her favorite things. Please give it to her. And remember what I said. You must be careful on the way. And you must not wander or talk to strangers. I'll remember, Mother. Goodbye. And so, Little Red Riding Hood left for her grandmother's house. It was bright and sunny that morning, and Little Red Riding Hood was enjoying walking through the woods. On the way, she spotted some beautiful flowers. Oh! Look at those flowers! They're Grandma's favorite color! They'll surely cheer her up! I should pick some for her! So, Little Riding Hood wandered into the woods to pick flowers. 
While Little Red Riding Hood was picking the flowers, a wolf came by. He stopped when he saw Little Red Riding Hood. As he watched her, a wicked thought crossed his mind. That little girl looks delicious. She will be mine. The wolf went up to Little Red Riding Hood and spoke to her in his friendliest voice. Hello, little girl. Look at those nice goodies in your basket. And those flowers you're picking are so pretty. Are they for your mother? Little Red Riding Hood was so busy picking the flowers that she forgot she wasn't supposed to talk to strangers. No, they aren't for my mother. <laughs> they are for my grandmother. I'm going to visit her. Oh, your grandmother. Does she live nearby? Yes. She lives in a cottage on the other side of the woods. Ah. With a dark look in his eye, the wolf said goodbye to Little Red Riding Hood and hurried out of the woods. Goodbye. The wolf ran straight to Little Red Riding Hood's grandmother's house. He knocked on the door. When Little Red Riding Hood's grandmother answered the door, the wolf rushed into the house. Huh? He tied Little Red Riding Hood's grandmother up and locked her in the cupboard. After a while, Little Red Riding Hood reached her grandmother's house. She found the door open and went in. Are you home? The wolf had dressed up in Little Red Riding Hood's grandmother's clothes. He was wearing her glasses too. And he had tucked himself in her bed. Little Red Riding thought the wolf was her grandmother. Hi, grandmother. It's me, Little Red Riding Hood. Huh? But when she drew closer, she noticed something very strange. Grandma, your ears look bigger. The wolf was very hungry. So he tricked her into coming closer. My ears are bigger, so I can hear you better. Come closer, my dear. Little Red Riding Hood then noticed that her grandmother's eyes looked bigger too. Huh? Why do your eyes look so big? So I can see you better. Come closer, my dear. Little Red Riding Hood then saw that her grandmother's teeth looked bigger too. Grandmother, why do your teeth look so much bigger? My teeth are bigger, so I can eat you up. Huh? The wolf jumped up and snapped his sharp teeth at Little Red Riding Hood. But she was a smart little girl. Help! 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 
A woodcutter, who was chopping wood nearby, heard Little Red Riding Hood. Huh? The woodcutter rushed into the house and taught the wolf a lesson. Take this, you bad wolf! The woodcutter and Little Red Riding Hood then rescued Little Riding Hood's grandmother from the cupboard. Little Red Riding Hood, you're safe, thank goodness. Little Red Riding Hood felt glad that the woodcutter had saved her that day. But she had learned her lesson. From then on, when she went out on her own, she always listened to her mother and never ever wandered off or talked to strangers again. Once upon a time, there lived a husband and a wife. Their house was right next to a garden that was full of fruits and vegetables. One day, the wife saw a delicious looking vegetable called Rapunzel growing in the garden. Husband, look, there are Rapunzels growing in the neighbor's garden. They look delicious. Would you please bring me some? The husband was afraid because the garden belonged to a witch. My dear, the garden belongs to a witch. I don't think it's safe for me to go there. The witch might cast a spell on me if she sees me. Then one day, the wife fell ill. She refused to eat anything that the husband gave her and only asked for the Rapunzels. Ah, Rapunzels. They are all that I would like to eat. They are the only things that will make me feel better. The husband was very worried about his wife. So later that night, he gathered all his courage and went into the witch's garden. Ah, uh, I hope the witch is not here. I'll pluck a few Rapunzels quickly and run home. The wife enjoyed the Rapunzels and felt so much better after eating them that she wanted more. These Rapunzels are making me feel much better. Dear, please get me some more. The husband returned to the witch's garden to get more Rapunzels. But to his great shock, the witch was there. And when she saw the husband, she grew very angry. You have been stealing my Rapunzels. You are a thief. I will cast a spell on you and turn you to stone. The husband was very afraid. He began to shake with fear. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Please don't punish me. My wife is unwell. I only took the Rapunzels for her help. I, I, I will pay you whatever you want. I don't want money, but I'll tell you what I want instead. When your wife gets better and has a baby, I will come and take the baby instead. And if you don't give it to me, I will turn you to stone. Uh, uh, okay. The husband was very afraid of the witch, and so he agreed. Time passed, and the husband forgot all about the witch. His wife got better, and one day, she gave birth to a beautiful baby girl. 
Soon after the baby's birth, the witch appeared. I have come to take the baby. <laughs> I hope you remember. You promised that you would give me your baby in exchange for my Rapunzel's. Or else, I would turn you to stone. Huh? I'll keep my word. You can take the baby. The witch took the baby. I will name you Rapunzel. After the vegetable your father stole from my garden. And when you grow up, you will be my servant. Ha 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 ha! The witch kept Rapunzel in a room atop a tall tower. The years passed, and Rapunzel grew into a pretty young lady with very long and thick golden hair. And since the tower had no stairs, Rapunzel could never leave. She would spend her days cooking and cleaning for the witch. Rapunzel was very lonely because there was no one to talk to. She would look out the window and sing songs with the hope that someone would hear her. Hello, hello. Will you be my friend? I'd like a friend. A friend, friend, friend. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. I'd like to use it as a ladder and stair. Rapunzel would let down her hair, and the witch would use it to climb up to the tower. Poor Rapunzel. She spent all her days looking after the mean old witch. Each day, the witch would return to the tower to eat her meals and make Rapunzel do her chores. One day, a kind and handsome prince passed by the tower. He saw Rapunzel singing at the window. Hello, hello. Will you be my friend? I'd like a friend, a friend, friend, friend. The prince fell in love with Rapunzel immediately. He wanted to call out to her, but he saw the witch coming and hid. He then watched how the witch climbed up. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. I'd like to use it as a ladder and stair. After the witch left, the prince called out to Rapunzel. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. I'd like to use it as a ladder and stair. Rapunzel was happy and surprised to see the prince. She let him climb up to the tower. And in no time, the two became good friends. One day, the prince asked Rapunzel to marry him. Rapunzel, will you marry me? If you say yes, I will go home and bring a silken ladder to take you out of this tower. Yes, my dear prince, yes. And so the prince left to bring a ladder. I'll be back soon, Rapunzel. I will take you far away from the witch and this tower. Yes, my prince. Please come back soon. The prince and Rapunzel were very happy, but they didn't know that the witch was watching them. So, Rapunzel wants to leave me, and the prince is coming back to take her. I will teach them both a lesson that they will never forget. To teach Rapunzel a lesson, the witch cut off Rapunzel's beautiful hair. Ah! The witch then cast a spell and sent Rapunzel to a far away desert. 
When the prince returned to rescue Rapunzel, Rapunzel, my darling, please put down your hair so I can climb up. The witch put down Rapunzel's hair. The prince was expecting to see Rapunzel, but when he climbed into the window, he saw the witch. Hello. Huh? The heartless witch then pushed the prince down. Down you go. As the prince fell to the ground, his face hit a thorny bush that pricked his eyes and turned him blind. Ah, ah, my eyes. I can't see a thing. Poor Rapunzel was lost in the desert. She was hungry and thirsty and had nowhere to go. And the prince wandered all over, wondering where Rapunzel was. Many months later, the prince and Rapunzel finally reached the same spot. Hello, hello. Will you be my friend? I'd like a friend, a friend, friend, friend. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, my darling, where are you? My dear prince, I'm so happy to see you. Rapunzel cried with tears of joy the moment she saw the prince. And the tears that fell from her eyes went into the prince's eyes and healed them. Rapunzel, I can see you, my dear. The prince and Rapunzel returned to the prince's kingdom where they married and lived happily ever after. Chuchu and the other children made the fort on their own. Soon, it was ready. You poor children. You must be very hungry. Come in. Good morning, Daddy. Good morning. But the morning's almost over. I'd like to be a gardener too, Miss Dorothy. If you do your homework today, Chica, 